All right. So what we do, so if you're in the new book, is section 7.4. I think the old book is 7.5. Um, so the, the Z scores are what we create to show how spread out means and percentages are from each other. Right? Z scores use standard deviations to show how spread out data points are. Is that cool? It's a nice synopsis of what it does. Um, so they tell me how spread out uh, data points are from the mean. What we have to use when we're talking about creating confidence intervals for standard deviations or doing hypothesis tests for standard deviations, we can't use the normal distribution anymore. It's not going to apply to the situation. We use what's called chi-square scores. That's where we go. Did you see the X? <laughs> it's a chi. Okay. Not chi from Dragon Ball Z. Don't get all excited. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I see you've got that. Um, this is chi-square. All right. So what what you do to to create the picture? So to create the picture of a sampling distribution, we would go around, take a group of like uh, thirty people, get their average age and plot it, right? And then go to take another group of 30 and plot it. And that's how we get the normal distribution from that, because that would be big enough to have the whole thing be normal, normal enough. So what we do to create this distribution is we take this group of 30 or whatever, and we calculate its standard deviation, and we plot it. And then we plot, do another group of 30, and we plot it, and so forth. Cool? So what happens is, I don't know if you guys remember this, um, you, you end up with a shape that's skewed, right, to the right. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and why does that make sense? Uh, the standard deviation for a sample, where, where are most of the standard deviations in this picture? They're kind of like in here, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's got this tail off to the end. Because if I take a sample, some of them might have very large standard deviations based on who I pick. Maybe I happen to pick all the young and all the old people. So the standard is going to be huge. But most standard deviations should actually be kind of a little bit below the actual standard deviation. Because they're going to kind of follow the standard, the sample that you pick. So that's why it's got a bit of a tail up this way. Because the absolute smallest, of course, it could be is zero. You just happen to pick all the same age. You kind of with me? So there's a kind of a wall here, but if you happen to pick all really young, really old people, your standard deviation is pretty damn big. So that's why it's got a tail off in that direction. So if I took, uh, from a population, I take groups of 30 people at a time and get their standard deviation of their ages and plot it and plot it and take another group and plot it and take another group and plot it and you're all 37. Freaky. So you're zero, right? Okay, with me? That would freak me out if I just happen to pick. All right, maybe, maybe. Or I pick a group and it's like, you know, two-year-olds and 98-year-olds. Hello, standard deviation. So it'd be way the hell up there. I end up with this picture. So this is called the chi-square distribution. And that's going to involve the other table that I was talking about. Just like the z-chart, z-score chart, uh, the t-chart. Now we're going to have this chi-square chart to look at. So the, the formula... And... To be a little more specific here, um, this is actually, let me see how I can make this make more sense. If I have a, how do I say this? Very quickly. If I had a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of, of 2 or something, right? And it's normal. I know it's normal. What happens if I change it to z-scores? What happens to the mean? Becomes zero, right? It still's got the same shape, cool. But now, of course, forty-two would become one. One. Why is it one? Because every step I take is two. So it's just one step up. You with me? So the actual picture I've got here is a little more complicated than what I was talking about. Once I get a standard deviation of a sample, I calculate sort of like I calculate a z-score using this formula here. 
I calculate a chi-square score using this formula here. Let me let you absorb that for a second. So if I took a little sample of size, whatever, size 30, then this would be 29 times its standard deviation divided by the population standard deviation. Let me let you take that in. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, can you say that last part again? So if I want to create this distribution, I calculate a chi-square score for standard deviation. So uh, if I took a group of 30, this would be 29 times its standard deviation squared divided by the standard deviation of the population squared. All right. So that's what that formula is. So if my standard deviation was zero, I would end up here. And of course, if my standard deviation was as big as it could be, I'd be way the hell up there. If my standard deviation equaled exactly sigma, if I happened to pick a sample whose standard deviation was the same as the population, what would happen with the chi-square score? If these were the same, what would it be? So if I had uh, 30, it would equal 29. Do you guys see that? All right, all right. So look at the, let me see, not everybody's got their books. Let me put it up here. See if they do this well enough. No, I turned it off. Gotta wait for it to decide to let me turn it back on. Alright, we'll figure out. If you have your book, it's on page 356. You said chi's are like z scores? In a sense, I take. When measuring. Yeah, I take what I measured. So what do I do here? Look what I do here. I take what I got from the sample, right? Either it could be x or x bar, and I subtract the mean. So this is kind of like, that's approximating this, right? Yeah. You kind of with me? So here, I get a sample standard deviation, and I divide it by, you know, this is actually the variance, of course, right, squared? And I divide it by the population squared. So it's, it's not the same idea as taking subtraction, because why did this subtraction make sense? What's a z-score tell you? How far, How far you are. are you? Yeah, the distance, right? So that's why I want to take subtraction. Yeah. So this is, this is actually more of an idea of ratios. What fractional part of the variance is my sample variance, right? But in both cases, you're just comparing, right? Yeah. In a sense. I've destroyed this thing. It's too bad. <laughs> it, was, it was such a good chart. It worked so well. But on page 356, I wanted to show you. For degrees of freedom of 20, can you see where the peak occurs if you have the book? Oh, there it goes. All right. It doesn't peak at 20. So if you kind of follow it along, if you put a straight edge down in your book, if you have the book, you can see that the peak occurs a little bit below 20. Yeah, exactly. So the peak would occur a little bit below 20 there, right? So, and that's because these should be a little smaller than these. But the average should be, so here's the mode, and here's the average is going to be a little bit up because of these. So the average will be right at degrees of freedom, but the mode is a little bit below that, because more of them should be below it. Oh, here we go. Cool. So this is what I'm talking about. So here's what that thing looks like. <coughs> Holy crap and a half. Tactical difficulty, all of it. So that's the shape. It's got the tail up here. So for degrees of freedom of 20, the peak is a little bit below that. Right? But the average is actually right there. And that's because you got values that are up higher. So the average of the sample variances, this is part of what we proved in section 6.4 when you guys had to do that beautiful work that some of you didn't do. But you had to make that table from a sample. Uh, you had to pick two at a time and figure out their standard deviations and so forth. And if you do the average of all of them, it equaled the 
uh, actual population variance. I don't know if you guys remember. It didn't work for standard deviations, but it worked for variances. So this formula would not work if I used standard deviations here instead of variances. Because standard deviations don't target the parameter. I'm using mm -hmm. a lot of stats words. Mm -hmm. Standard deviations don't target their population parameter. They don't. Sample standard deviations don't target. That's, that's one of the big things that came out of section 6.4. Variances do. So that's why it makes more sense to build that formula on that. So sure enough, the average would be right at 20. It turns out there's more in this direction than there is on the other side. So it averages here. But the peak is a little bit below that. Hmm. The most standard deviations that I get from a sample is going to be a little bit below that. Because again, the sample mean follows the, the sample that I pick. If I happen to pick a bunch of younger people, their sample mean will be closer to their ages. The standard deviation is going to be smaller than it should be. Right? You guys remember that talk we had? The n minus 1 thing is an attempt to adjust for that. But it doesn't complete do it. It makes the average work, but the most of them are going to be below that a little bit. Now, how much how important is all that? Not terribly. But I want you to understand why the image is kind of like skewed in one direction. Um, so, one thing I kind of i am hoping that you guys are, uh, somebody out there might be worried about. And, and it's sort of like, Remember what we did with this. We, one of the things we did was we solved for x. And of course, what did we get when we did that? Mm, that. Right? <laughs> do, you, do you remember that little formula? There? That's the, if you need the raw score and you know the z-score, that's how you get there. Right? And I told you that was actually a, a note. The standard deviation is the number of z-scores from the mean to the data point. Right? All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. And of course, do you remember off of this, we said, oh, we normally don't know this, so let me replace it with what we normally know. And this is where the idea of confidence intervals came from, right? A little trip down memory lane. Or it's the first time it feels like some of you guys are looking at it. Right. Like, okay, Jeff. I understand. But so what we're going to do is we got, let me rewrite this because I've done my whole like football uh, <laughs> play thing on there. <laughs> then you go around this way. All right. So that's what, that's sort of like my z-score. If I solve it for sigma, I'm going to kind of get in the direction of uh, uh, the confidence interval, right? So, so here, this confidence interval, the upper and lower parts are because of the plus or minus z there, right? Mm -hmm. So if I want to be 95% confident, it would be negative 1.96 to positive 1.96. That's built into the formula. Are you guys with me? And it's because of this idea that it's based on plus, right? So that's a little more direct. This one is not built on plus. It's built on a ratio. How do I solve for the population variance? How do I solve for sigma squared? What do I do? No, no. How do I solve for it in this formula? I would multiply 1 over n minus 1. Mm -mm. 1 over 6 minus squared. Uh -uh. None of that. Oh, you would just... How do you solve for x? Multiply it. And then divide by 7, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you switch these. Boop. All right, so if I want to solve for this, I'm just going to switch these. Sort of like what we did with the error term. Mm -hmm. Do you kind of remember that? Solving for n. So if I switch these, I get here. All right, so that's, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Jeff. Algebra is magic. No. So what we can do from this is if I can figure out Sort of like we got here, if I can figure out the upper and lower z, and of course what's beautiful about the z scores is they come from something that's symmetric to zero. So that was a great place to start, because now if I know it's negative 1.96, it's got to be positive 1.96 on the other side. Now what's wrong with this picture? What's the lowest it could be? Zero. zero. Oh shit! So, so if I want to get the middle 95%, I want to make a 95% confidence interval. That would mean for degrees of freedom of 20, 
my high scores would have to be like 9 to 34 or something. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to get from my chart. I'm just going to get that right out of the chart. And I've got copies for everything. Yeah. <laughs> copies for all. So if I could figure out, and now i got to remember, I've been so worried about getting this stuff graded that I haven't even I put notes together for today. So the book calls this chi-square left and chi-square right. I normally call them chi-square small and chi-square big. But it doesn't matter. Whatever the hell. we got to do a problem for you to see which way you like better. right? Because it's going to be... You can, uh, well, picture's gone. You can understand that uh, uh, I'm going to have a left one and a right one. Now, in the z-score table, it didn't matter what the left and right one were. They were both the same damn thing with different signs. Who cares? But here it's going to totally matter which one's left, which one's right. To me, it's smaller one and bigger one. Probably because I'm really bad with left and right. So, what I'm trying to get this down to is, this is the exact expression for what the real standard deviation is. Now, we normally have no idea what it is or where it is or what score it's related to. So, we get these two for being 95% confident, if it was like 3 and 34, like I said, whatever the hell I said, if it was those, I could do this divided by 34, and do this divided by 3, and then that would be between those two. So what it boils down to is I get this formula for the confidence interval for population standard deviation, I get this. I get our variance is between uh, you got it. Can somebody tell me why that one's going to be big? Because when you divide by big, you get small. small. Right? So it'll be smaller dude, less than this, less than bigger dude, right? And that's why I don't like left and right, because they end up on the wrong side. Do you see what I'm saying? And who cares, at the end of the day, if you divide them, and this is 7, and that's 20, 7 belongs here, and 20 belongs over there. If you put them the wrong way, you don't make any sense to me, right? You kind of with me a little bit? Of course, not yet. You're all like, please, numbers. Okay. So let's try the problem out. Believe it or not, we are ready for a problem. Almost. Let me give you the chart. And we'll focus on finding some values of chi-square. What I really, what's really difficult, of course, for you guys to understand is, obviously, because we're just barely getting into this thing, chi-square is one of the most important values in statistics. So z-scores get you going, and z-scores carry you through a lot of things. But chi-square takes over for the more complicated situations. So we've had very uncomplicated situations, to be honest. And so z-scores can handle it. But the minute I want to compare, instead of two things, if I wanted to compare three things, z-scores freak the hell out. I can compare two things, no problem. I can compare, like we've done, we've done hypothesis tests comparing... Uh, we think it's more than 10.7, and we found 12.8, and we can compare those two things. So what if I had to compare three things, or eight things, or holy shit? That's where these guys come in. These guys take over where z-scores stop. you to realize everything's going to be a little bit more complicated because of the fact that it's not centered at zero, of course, right? It's going to be a little bit worse. You can tell the minute you look at this thing that it's going to be a little bit worse. Let's analyze this. So notice it's always the area to the right. So if I wanted to find a 
I'm going to do here and then there. If I wanted to find the 95%, that's the most common one, so we'll do 95% confidence interval for the variance. And let's say N is 30. Why not? Do they got 29? Yeah, it's off this. Let's make N 20 so it's actually on the, it's a little easier to see everything. Why is it always to the right? Because that's just the way it's set up. Okay. Right? Sort of like the z-score table. What's the area always when you look left, it up? Left. I know. So it's really funny to me that they chose this one to be the right. We just go with it. <laughs> we weren't there when they developed this. So if I want to find 95% confidence interval, all right, so I want to get there, and I want this to be 95%. So how much is to the right of this guy, for example? If this is 95% in here, 2.5. Yeah, 2.5. So 0 0.025. And there will be how much to the right of this one? How much to the right of that one? If to the left of it is 0 0.025, to the right is 975, right? You guys with me? All right, maybe, maybe. So does everybody see where these two numbers came from? No. So if I want a 95% confidence interval, there's, there's definitely 2.5% up here. So that means there's definitely 2.5% down there, but the crazy-ass chart, they decided to make it so all the areas are to the right. So if there's 2.5% here, how much is to the right of this lo lower dude? If there's 25 on this side, how much is on the other side? 97.5%, the rest. So notice how this other dude is always just going to be, let's see if this makes sense. Like in this case, it's half of 5% added to this. Do you guys see that? Some of you guys maybe think about it, muddle it over, or just always draw a picture, which is a good idea anyway, right? Why Let me try this again. Let me ask this again. Be very honest. Does everybody see where those two numbers came from? If you don't see how to get those numbers, you can't use this. Right? You can pick numbers at random. There's a chance you'd be right. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put money on it. How is it not zero to the left of that line? This if, guy? No, of the other line. If you said that the standard deviations start at zero, don't they? But what's the area here? I thought there As was won't that. be zero. No, no. Where does this end? Does this go all the way back to the beginning? No. If it was 100%, sure it would. But it's not. It's 95%. Now, it's not symmetric, so the middle is not like the real middle. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. But we still cut it the same way. If I want the 95% confidence interval, it's going to leave 2.5% on the outside. Wait, I'm, have, are we using this chart yet? We are, totally. How? <laughs> All right, I just want to make sure everybody can get those numbers first. No, he didn't get any of those numbers. I haven't done that. a damn thing with that yet. Just can we all get these numbers here? He got that from 95%. Oh, okay, I got that. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the chart, and then we'll do another example with a different confidence level. So if I want to look at 1, I'm going to look at 0.975, right? Mm -hmm. That's to the right of what I would call chi-square small. And so I call it chi-square big. You guys got it with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So I know I'm looking at 0.975 for the smaller dude. What's my degrees of freedom going to be? 19. 19. So that means that chi squared small is 8.907. Mm -hmm. So again, if we're all cool with these numbers, I'm which, not okay with that. Well, I'm then you gotta tell me. With 97.97. How much is down here? Well, how much has got to be down here if there's 95% here in the middle? It's just like before. Just like confidence intervals, it's yeah. just not it's not symmetric, so it's not centered. But if there's 95% on the inside, how much must be on both sides? Okay, I got. Okay, I got that. There must be two and a half percent on both sides, right? Okay. So the one thing you gotta realize is. Because of the way the chart is set up, you just have to take a second and say, if that's 2.5% there, what's to the right? 97.5. It's always going to be nine, what you've given plus half of what's alpha. 
It's exactly like before, but you switch sides, basically. Pretty much, exactly, yeah. So it's just different enough to be a little bit irksome, right? So is everybody cool with the fact that if you look that up now, now I've got that number, I just have to look it up and go down to the degrees of freedom, and I've got my lower. So that's kind of like negative 1.96 for a 95% confidence interval using z-scores. We all understand it's not negative because the lowest it could be is zero, right? Okay. Okay. You're all like, why did there have to be a week left? <laughs> it's too bad, ha. Huh. All right. So we got 8.9. Now you guys get this. Don't say anything. Don't say a word. See if you can get that one. I know some of you guys already got it. Awesome. Sit on it. <laughs> so, of course, this isn't too bad, right? It's on the same row. Degrees of freedom is still... 20, uh, what is it, 19? But now I want to go over to 0.025. So I get 32.852. Yep. Okay. So that is related to, now I know this does not, those numbers don't look at all like this, but it's exactly like finding negative 1.96 and 1.96 for my z-scores for a confidence interval that we're used to. And that was so much easier because it's centered at zero. You only have to find one side and put a negative on it for the other side, ooh, right? Mm -hmm. Things are a little bit harder here now because we're talking about standard deviations, the smallest they could be is zero. Yes? Camera. Oh, what's the matter? It's so needy, it needs power. All right, so let's do another one of those before we do an actual whole problem out. If I gave you a standard deviation that we found from this, you would just plug it in there. Yes, ma'am. You good? So let's, let's actually do this whole problem out. So let's say you got a standard deviation from your sample. You took 20 things, 20 people, got their ages, but you took the standard deviation of their ages. And let's say you got uh, 5.91. How would I throw together this confidence interval formula? What would go here? 19. 19. How are we doing so far? Okay. What's up then? I don't know how you got to 32.852. So what was the other number? 0.025? Yeah. Degrees of freedom is 19. So look at it. 0.025. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. I like it. So that's why this is so key. If you can't find these numbers, you can't do anything with the chi-square stuff. Let me do a little CPR for my phone. Clear. Yeah, all right. So, finishing this out. So here we go, 19. What will go here? 5.91 squared. Good. Now the thing you got to realize, I don't, I kind of said this before in a sort of way, these numbers are what chi-square is. You don't square it. You kind of with me? So chi-square small is 8.907. You don't square that again. All right. Uh, oops, sorry. So what should be on this side, of course, big? 32.852. So my population variance is in between that, and on the other side, the top is exactly the same again, right? And the bottom now is going to be this guy. So again, it just becomes a plug and chug, as statistics so often is, the concept is remarkably interesting and weird and difficult, but the formulas are just plug and chug. You gotta know how to do both though. That's the key. So somebody help me out. What do you get for that? Let's 
see if that's the same. Yeah. So for this lower one, I got 20.201. So cool, just plug it and check it. And for the other one, yeah, seventy four point five oh seven, like that. Now that's what the variance does. Now that seems like wow, good job there, man. But that's the variance. How do you get something for the standard deviation? You just take. Square roots. Kicks ass. So if I take a square root of that guy, the bigger dude, because he's the one up on my screen at the moment, I get 8.632. And for the smaller, the other guy, 4.495. Oh. <laughs> Square root. Square root. That's all. So if I think it's square root, now I'm talking about the standard deviation. Okay. But I can't use the standard deviation from the beginning because standard deviations don't target the population parameter. I've got to start with variances for this whole thing to make sense, for these chi squares to make sense. But I can always take the square root at the end. So my my uh, standard deviation for my sample was 5.91. So I am 95% confident that this interval contains the true standard deviation for the population. You with me? Was S given in the beginning? And yes, was... right there. Like in the very get-go? No, not from the very get-go, no. I decided to give us one so we could actually do this work. Cool. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. Notice, is that right in the middle of that? Yeah. You sure? No. How far is it from this side? 1.5 roughly, right? How far is it from that side? 2.7. So, of course, it's not going to be right in the middle because my picture is not symmetric. It's skewed to the right. right. So that's why this side is always going to be higher, further away. It kind of goes with the visual of what it looks like, the distribution. Right? Distribution. All right, let's do another one. Uh, <laughs> Yes, sir. So that we don't have to like write a statement like we did. Yeah, you, you notice how I just said it. Yeah. But I, I didn't want to write it. So we do have. To, so we do have. Yeah. To. So we are ninety-five percent confident that this interval contains the true sample, the true uh, standard deviation for the population of ages or whatever it is you were talking about. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. So yes, if you were worried you didn't have to do it, you do. So you can rejoice. Be happy. All right, here we go. Let's try another one. Let's do a different confidence level and a different... And so let's say we take... to be 19.04. Uh, find the 90% confidence interval. So let's do this one together. Which movies? I've never seen any other Batman movies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's only slightly, that's slightly less sacrilegious than never seeing any Star Wars. Uh, good. All right, so it's, you're not as bad off then as does it. He just thinks I'm not terrible at life. Uh, That's a bit of a stretch. All right, so the 90% confidence. Let's start with the what appears to be the hard part of this problem is getting used to how this thing is laid out and how to get there, right? If I want to be 90% confident, you don't have to make your picture. You can make it like normal, but just realize it is skewed. So there's 90% in there, so how much is going to be on this on each side? 5%. 5%. So, of course, this one is going to be easy. That's 0 0.05. What's this one going to have to be? 
0.95%. Yeah, 0.95, right? So again, it's going to be that plus the number you started with, right? Always. It's all, one of them is going to be half of what's outside, and the other one's going to be that plus what's in the middle. Because, of course, that's how you get this. You take, you take that plus that to get the whole side. Yes, sir? So on the, on the chi or whatever, chi, uh, chi square chart? Chi. Yes. With the zero, 0 0.95 is 90. Would 0 0.90 then be, what, 80? 80% confidence? Yeah, yeah. If it was 80%, then it would be 0 0.10, mm -hmm. right? And this would be 0 0.90. Right. Totally. Yeah. A lot, totally. And notice these two, of course, always have to add up to 1. So that's another quick way. If you know that one's 0.05, the other one's got to be 1 minus that. What? So remember, what was it before? The one we just did was uh, 0.025, and this was 0.975, right? Well, what's 1 minus this? That. Oh. All right. <laughs> so can you guys get chi-square big and chi-square small for this? Yeah. So don't say chai. It's not chai tea. It's not tai chi. Can I say chi? It's not chai tea or tai chi, whichever place you put your tea and see. It's not that. Do we get it wrong if we call it chi? Yes, you do. Well, then yours is easy to create. That's <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I got to kind of, I don't want to make this too small. So here's my 0.95. I can get the uh, small dude. 0.95, if I go down to, what's my degrees of freedom? 30. 30. 20. So I get, what do you guys get? 18.493. Beautiful, 18.493. Oh. Oh. 18.493. And then this guy, I look at the same row, degrees of freedom is still 30. And I go over to 0.05, what do you get? 43.773, kick ass. the right thing. Okay. So I desperately, now this is, uh, I desperately want you to understand. This picture is just like, if I ask you, um, what percentage is between negative 1.96 and 1.96 in a normal distribution, those z-scores, what percentage is in between there? When do you use 1.96 for what confidence interval? Yeah, 95%. There would be 95% in the middle. Remember the empirical rule said it was about two standard deviations, 95%? Because it's way back in time. Uh, so I want you to realize all we're doing is we're finding what these scores, they're just like the 1.96 and the negative 1.96, but these are the chi-square scores that contain, that, that hold that much of the data. Same way that negative 1.96 to 1.96 holds 95% of the data. Between these two, for degrees of freedom of 30, it holds 90% 90, 90 of the data. So if I could figure out, okay, if I go this far down, what would the actual data point be that's there? What would the actual sample variance be that's there? Zero. Or the, the variance, sorry. And that would be like figuring out this guy. So the true variance is going to be in between this and this because that catches the right percentage of the data. It's exactly like a normal confidence level. The weirdest part to me is just getting used to why the distribution is different. And, of course, the numbers are going to be different. right? They're going to feel very different. But the actual work is remarkably simple. Almost too simple. So to fill this in... What's this first piece look like? 30 minus yeah, 1. Yeah, good. 30. What was it? Yeah, 31 minus 1 is 30. 19.04 squared over 43.773. Just remember to make this side small, you got to divide by the bigger 
value that you looked up, right? That's why I like calling it big and small instead of left and right. Because if I called this left and right, they would end up going on the wrong freaking side. I always hated that. I'm like, I don't, I'm not good with left and right already, and you're turning them around on me. What the hell? And of course, notice the tops are always the same. That could be some kind of a shortcut on calculation stuff. So that's going to be over... Uh, 18.493. Yeah, 18.493. Good. And then just plug and shut. So I want you to realize, instead of doing T-scores, we could actually use Z-scores and just use a lower and upper bound for the real standard deviation to make like... Uh, have two different possible values for the standard deviation and make confidence intervals for each one. I mean, there's a whole other way to do it. It's a little weird. I wouldn't suggest doing that. But you can actually estimate the lowest and highest the standard deviation could be, and you can use the maximum one if you're trying to be conservative about something, right? Or you can use both of them so you can bound what the answer is going to be in, in the middle of those two. So what do you guys get for this one? 248.456. As we say it in the I like that. Cool. 588.095. And then you just take the square root. 15.762. Who to what? 15.762. And 24.251. So one thing I really feel good about, and this is something you should always make sure about, what should definitely happen here? What's a big thing, big clue that I've done something wrong? If this value is not in there, right? Now, of course, it's not right in the middle, but it should be in there. If that value is not in there, you made a mistake somewhere. Maybe you should go find out what it is. Don't just give me that. Yeah. You always want to take them up to the decimal Oh, yeah. We know that. Cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so there's always a weird balance to maintain. The concept's so hard, I, but I need to get you guys to kind of understand where these things are coming from. But I don't want to get you so deep into it that you lose sight of the fact that the work is so damn easy. It really is. Once you see how the chart works, it's, it, that's the hardest part. And once you got that, it's just plug and chuck. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. You're all like, sure, Jeff, that's how it starts. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, that would be good if I had that. So, of course, you get problems like this here. Okay, number 14. Will Hill it problem. Well, that's right, the focus doesn't work for the answers, of course. So, number 14, the highway speeds. So, we should be used to this. When we learn T scores, they started giving us problems where we had to calculate it through using what? How would I do number 14? What's one of the first things they need to calculate? Standard deviation. Yes, standard deviation. Of course, how do I do that? <laughs> yeah, one bar stats. You just put it in list one, one bar stats, get it. We're not in chapter three anymore, right? So I'm not going to make you do the whole table anymore. Uh, so do number 14. Good review. If you don't have the calculator, I don't have them either. Sorry, didn't bring them. So if you don't have your calculator, just hang out or look on somebody else. Or go buy one. Have Amazon drone it in for you. That'd be neat. Here it comes, Jeff. Here it It opens the door. You know, I think Amazon is going to be Skynet because they're actually creating Skynet. robots to take over some of the menial tasks of going up and down the long aisles of stuff they have in their warehouses and taking stuff out. They're designing better robots to do that. So that's where it's a little less uh, exciting of a place for them to come from. Give me a cross. And what would you like? <laughs> I swear my whole life I thought... Making robots was illegal, 
My whole life I thought that. Really? <laughs> I must have seen it in a movie or something. And then I saw a robot on TV and I was like, what the heck? I thought it was illegal. And, and they're right there flaunting it. I know, hell? and I was like, I still <laughs> robot. think it should be illegal. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. I'm to replace Just you. don't let them think for themselves. Yeah. 50 years when the robots are thinking for themselves, they'll be like, We're that kind of talk so guys some trouble. <laughs> We're huh? gonna get so lazy. So what? Lazy. We're already lazy. Right well, have you seen Wally? -E? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've never exactly. seen Wally. -E. No. They don't. They don't even walk in Wally. -E. They go around the other island. I know, but when they do walk, they're like little babies. But they get, I think, two of them hit each other or something. They're on. <laughs> I mean, we're not far from that, to be honest. Oh my gosh. The segue almost got us there quick, and then it kind of fizzled out, thank God. You only see those idiots going downtown with a freaking, you know, the Roman gladiator helmet. Have you seen them, people? <laughs> Look at me. All right, good job. All right, I'm taking you guys away from this. So how do I do one more Now, what, what do you think they have to tell you at the beginning of this homework section? What do you think still got to be true about this? What are we trying to get? Yeah, it's got to come from a, a population that's at least normal enough. Right? So at the very beginning of this section, they say they do. I think so. Because yeah. we're talking about... Yeah, we go back, right? <laughs> Did you get the standard deviation? Yeah, 4.07. Wow, Patrick. Why didn't you choose 3.90? Because it's not, it's, it's a sample, it's not known. Population isn't known. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Thanks, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, though. So, 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 I was like, oh yeah. I have a mic side down. I think that's the worst. Yeah, that's what we're like. All right, guys, so remind me, how do I get the, once I got them in the list one, how do I get the uh, the standard deviation for that? Uh, craziness. So stat, count. Enter. Don't leave me hanging. One of our stats. One of our stats, sorry. And that in list one, so I can go ahead and enter. So the only thing I, I need from that list is what? S. Good, S, because this is a sample. So I definitely won't have to use this. Some, I love that uh, once in a while I started somebody tell me, well, the calculator gave me the, the standard deviation of the population. <laughs> At this point in the semester, I'm like, no, come on. So this, of course, calculator has no idea. We already talked about that. We know it's a sample we put in there. we got to use this guy. All right, so let's see. So now we're at the very beginning. That whole thing was just to get us started. So now I know n is what? 12. 12. S is 4.075. So now I just got to find uh, the chi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for two reasons. It would be 4.08. If you took it to two decimal places, but more importantly, you got to take standard deviation out at least three places, right? Realistically, you don't want to round it at all, but you know we get tired writing all these decimal places. Three is good. Um, so ninety-five percent confidence. What am I? We already did this earlier, but what are my two 
percentages I'm going to look up. Yeah, 0.975 and 0.025. You just got to make sure those two add up to be one, and that means you're on the right track. Or at least you're not as far off as you could be. Oh, sorry. Degrees of freedom is what? 11. 11. Thank you. That's a little bit better. So what should it be? What's the small one? 3.816. 3.816. I like how you guys are all, should we say something? Is there <laughs> 0.025. What is it? 21.920. 21.920. Cool. And then you just got to plug and chuck, right? So you got uh, your degrees of freedom. 11. Yeah, so 4.075 squared over the big dude to get the smaller number. And the bigger number, same top. And of course, divided by the other dude, right? Coolness. Okay. And then you just gotta do that. Let's see. So we get so one thing I sometimes do. It's not that big of a deal here. Four point before you took this. Mm -hmm. Eight point three one three square. It's because you rounded. I didn't round. I just went straight. So it'll be that divided by twenty one point nine two zero. Coolness, and then that divided by 3.816. So cool. So I, it doesn't matter. It's not that big of a savings in time. But you can store the top in X, and then you just got to divide because the tops are the same, right? Uh, so you get from 8.333 up to. 8.867. So the actual standard deviations between 2.883. Uh -huh. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.87. 8.
don't say intervals. It's kind of like scratching the chalkboard. With, you know, like, oh, no. It's just one interval down there, right? This is just an example of my geekiness. Just interval. Uh, we are 95% confident that the interval this contains the true standard deviation of the population of what? What was this all about? Highway Number speeds. highway speeds. Yeah, you know, I've get all you know, highway speeds is fine. They're all they're very specific about highway speeds. Cool. So that's exactly the same language we used for the other kinds of confidence intervals, right? So this is still chapter seven. All the same kind of stuff applies. I just have to use this different distribution because we're talking about standard deviations themselves. And standard deviations are what set up the other distribution that we use. So that's why we have to use some other distribution. Maybe, 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 maybe. Hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. All right, so again, uh, this is section 7.4 in the new book, 7.5 in the old book. And the old book, 7.4, was the T-score section. They okay. broke that up in the old book. Um, just to give you a little preview, section 8.5 is the hypothesis tests for this. Uh, let me see if they give you a little... No, they don't. Rah. Where do I go? 8.5, there. Uh, here, yeah, good. Page 420. Page 420, they have a whole little uh, um, uh, problem worked out. Now, they have seven steps there for some crazy reason, but you can see all of our five steps there, the same steps we used before, except now the claim is going to be about a standard deviation. So I'm going to have a little sigma in my hypotheses, right? Not a little mu, not a little p, but a little sigma. Cool. All right. uh, so I, what I think I'm going to do next time is we're going to leave really early today. Why not? I'm tired, man. Um, this here is almost too good. That's why it's so hard to come out. Next time we're going to do Section A5, and then I'm only going to do uh, a little bit out of Chapter 11, so I'll be very specific next time about what homework is due when uh, and what the final is going to cover up to. Cool? Okay, so the information for 7.5 homework is uh, online. <laughs> Is there 75 homework? Yes, it's on the. It's been on your homework sheet from the beginning. Okay. But it's not. It says to be announced. Yeah. So I'm gonna have oh, yeah, to pick that's out. Yeah, I, I had seen. I haven't uh, picked out homework yet, so I'll email it out. Okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. Young G. There you go. There's a practice finding. Thank you. Sure.